Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Right, let's see what's in the bag. Flux pens. Three of them. Kiss the flux apparently, we'll see. Typical rods and stuff. Two years shelf life. March 18. Let's actually have a little look and see what comes out, shall we? Hmm. Oh, there we go. Now it's pushing. Nothing coming out, though. Hmm. I might take a bit of going to get those out, actually. I don't know. Maybe I won't recommend these. I'll give them a go and see what they're like. Maybe they're rubbish. They entirely could be. Let's check the next one. Directions. Press tip to start flux flow. Keep cap on when not in use. Yes, okay. Well, I'm still waiting for the flux flow. There's definitely fluid in there, I can hear it. Or is it dry? Can't tell. Hmm. Let's try the last one. Nothing. That one's a different colour now. No, I don't know, that one's working. It's worked down now, that one's changed colour. Yeah, okay. So I guess they do work. We'll see how well they actually end up going though. Alright, let's see what's in this one. I think I know what it is. Cool, it's got both the caps on it. It's excellent. So this one here is a 55 to 350mm EFS lens. So it should do some nice long distance zooming. Auto focus and image stabilizer as well. 58mm cover in and the end there. 4 to 5.6. Yeah, cool. So and this end looks fine too. Right, so it looks alright. I'll we'll plug it in and see what actually happens with it. Well, that's the new lens on there. This is zoomed all the way out, so it's at 55, which is actually the equivalent of uh, my previous lens being zoomed all the way in, which you obviously can't see because it's out of focus. Um, so that's zoomed all the way up, and obviously there's my hand on the bench. And if I zoom right in, it won't focus, it's way too close. Here you go, it's right in. And yeah, can't focus on that. That's just the way it is. But this is probably going really well for outside. Let's look at this thing. It's pretty heavy and feels pretty sturdy. It's a Manfrotto uh, 237 blank flex arm or S clamp apparently. Oh, I'll have to see if I can actually make these ends fit something. I think that's a standard threaded fitting that end. That's like a quarter inch, no three eighths inch that end. Three eighths and quarter inch. That's what I believe these are. And this was suggested to me by Dave, EV blog Dave, as a um, option for mounting the camera on this side of the desk. So I can mount this over at the side there and actually move it around and position it a bit more easily. So I'll zoom out and try and show you what I mean. So over here somewhere out on a desk over here some in some method or other uh, that may be there and I can mount the, the camera over here and get good shots of things using the camera in that way um, just trying to find alternative mounting methods and ways to position the camera I mean I've got a tripod but it ten, tends to get in the way it's quite big and I've only got a little space and it's a bit hard to see over top of it so we'll see if I can use this or not it's about what was it 70 bucks or something you, you uh, yeah 70 bucks in New Zealand Plus postage, I think I paid about about 85, I think, all up. It's uh, it feels nice and robust. It feels strong, which is excellent. It's a matter of uh, how I'm actually going to attach to the thing. I have to try and figure out how to mount this thing. That might be the trickiest part, actually. Which can take the weight of the camera without falling off. I'll figure something out. I'm sure you're not that interested. Big box from eBay. I think I know what's in here. It's another project. Well, not the kind of project you might expect. You can blame Dave Jones for this, actually. <laughs> it's partially revived an old interest of mine. That's a mediocre packing. Alright, let's get this unwrapped. Could be packaged worse, I could complain, I suppose, but it's not that bad. A 
next one I unwrap this piece because I know what's in here. I'm going to give it away a little bit. This is a piece of gear, at least I used to use a piece of gear exactly like this 20 odd years ago when I was doing car audio. And um, it was one of probably the most important tools I used um, in order to get a accurate sounding car. Now this is a bit worse for wear I think, but it's a little project. It's an audio control. It's a 3050A, which is a one third octave real time spectrum analyzer, right? RTA. So this one's had a bit of wear and tear, it's got a ding on that socket there and a slightly bent, things like that. It's not perfect condition, it's got a bit of a ding on there. It's old, right? It's not new, it's it's fairly old. So it's got a audio output here. So there's an audio output, so that feeds out a um, pink noise. You also got other input options here, but this is the one we use for the microphone. And apparently this thing doesn't work. It feels lighter than the one I used to use. The one I used to use had a built-in battery pack, so I'm guessing this one doesn't have it. It's got some corrosion on the back here, so maybe it has had a battery pack in it and it's rust and it's uh, leaked. But I need to make sure this is set up for 240 volt. It's currently set for the 120 volt. I'm going to see a little tick just here. For 120, I need to make sure it's converted. So I need to open it up before I'm doing the else. It's got a printer interface. It's got different interface options on these. There was um, some other versions as well. Um, but the battery pack is ticked. So BP10, it's got a tick on it. So maybe it has had a battery pack and it's leaked and it's been taken out. I don't know. It might, it might still be in there. Right. Um, and in here should be the microphone. Now, a working one of these is several hundred dollars. Um, I don't know, probably about five or six hundred bucks for a working one. And because this isn't working, it's a bit cheaper. Now there's some screws missing from here, so I'm guessing that's where the battery pack used to be. It feels too light to have a battery pack in it. So I paid about two hundred bucks for this one because I figured, well, it can't be that complicated. <laughs> um, yeah. So, actually I might record some video on that, putting it apart, what do you reckon? Watch your future one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it in a separate video, I'm not going to put it apart now. Watch your future video, I'll do the tear down on this and, uh, and work on it. Right, let's see what's in here. Ah. 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 It's an Ender 3 magnetic mat. So I've got this obviously from Ender 3. I've got um, two of them. Got a spare one as well. I'll get two as soon as we're out for the ordering process, and uh, I'll fit that onto my 3D printer at some point and see how that goes compared to the original bed. It seems they have the same PEI sheet kind of thing on it, but this will actually mean that uh, it should be easy to get prints off of this and just flex it and it'll come out. In theory, that's the idea behind it anyway. We'll see if it works out that way or not. What's in this one? These are terminals for binding posts. So if you've got binding posts on something, the idea is you can put this under the binding post and, and tighten that down, then you've got a terminal here to use. I think it's supposed to be 4mm banana jack. Let's see if I've got one here. Is that plug in there? It will. I mean, you get some of these for a little while. It's also got the um, terminal there, you can actually stick a wire in and just clamp it down as well. So I got this because of my DC electronic load when I was doing some work with that not too long ago doing some testing. And uh, it's a bit inconvenient not be able to use banana leads to plug things together. So um, I've got some of these. I'll stick a link down below for these. I think I got them on Banggood. It could be on Express, one of them anyway. So I'll stick links down below for these. Alright, let's see what's in here. Look like 18650 battery holders. It is, and it's it's, it's annoying. You got text one way up, and then the battery is the other way up. That's kind of irritating. So say TP4056 USB plus five volt 1000 milliamp. So it's USB there. I think it was a USB charger. I really don't remember. Yeah, after I look at it, I'll let you know. I'll put I'll put some information like an overlay or something on. Or just go and look at the links which I put down for these products and base it on that too. Right, let's see what's in this one. It's going to be in my drawing. You can get into it. What's in the package? I'm playing now. Okay, so that is a yeah, 
5600 UF 80 volt Vichy capacitor. This is for something I'm fixing. What was it? Oh, that is the HP. I think that was the HP. HP 8901B. That's for the power supply. So at least I can finish fixing that now. And here's a couple of fan covers. Not the ones I need for this, but I've actually purchased a stock of fan covers from different sizes. These ones are obviously 60 mil. I also ordered some which are I think 90, 120 or something like that as well. A few different sizes, different types as well. I thought, well, it seems to be something I'll come across once in a while, so I'm going to stock up on them. So it's in here. So this is just a hot shoe slash cold shoe mount, I suppose. It's got like a clamp there, clamp onto a cold shoe mount, hot shoe mount, whatever. Uh, it's got a threaded quarter inch section there as well, so it's an adapter basically for quarter inch to uh, hot shoe, cold shoe. Now the reason I've got this is I could actually bolt this to something, I could mount this on a surface and then I could um, clamp something in here. I was actually thinking about this for my lighting system, but I've actually made something else now. So I don't think I didn't actually need it for that. It'll still be handy for something. I'll use it one day for something, so it's not been wasted completely. It's got some little springs in there as well, which should tension it. It stops it wobbling around. That's quite nice too, I suppose. Not that exciting. Again, I'll chuck links down below and stuff like that. More well, mailbag items. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, what's in here? It appears to be a um, lightning adapter. So it's lightning to audio. So I think that's a speaker output. I'm not sure it's a TRS or TRS. It's probably TRS. We'll see how this goes. So I'll see lightning in, lightning out, and audio. So this is really meant for like the iPhone 7, iPhone 8, and stuff like that, where there's no um, headphone jack on the phone, which is, in my opinion, a really dumb thing not to have. I don't know what is with Apple these days. They, they like to have this trend where they're removing ports off devices which people use, like headphone jacks and USB ports and display port connections and Ethernet ports and stuff like that off their computers, which makes absolutely no bloody sense. Anyway, that's my rant. No, I'm an Apple fanboy, I like Apple, but the direction they're going in the recent years, I am concerned about them. Anyway, what's in here? Right, so these are dampers for stepper motor drives. I've got what, four of them. I'll get the thing out of the bag, it'd be awesome. They've basically got a zinc coated mould steel, that's all those are. Zinc plated, that's why they've got this goldish colour, that's zinc. And it's got this hard rubber membrane there to join the two together. The idea there is that it helps to dampen some of the noise. Just a little bit. It's a bit it should be very stiff. It shouldn't really want to move. And that seems to be the case. It doesn't really want to move. Just shifting sideways like this, I can barely move at all. Look at that. See that? Just a little bit of movement there. Almost nothing at all. It should be basically no twisting movement. But the idea of this is it helps to, to dampen down the noise on stepper motors on 3D printers. So these are fairly cheap to get. I have a link down below in my description to get to get these. So I think I've got from Banger, I think. Oh, let's see what's in this one. Just want to do a little thank you to my Patreon supporters and anyone's donated to me. It really helps. You know, the money that I get from Patreon goes towards mailbag and buying things like this and a piece of test gear to repair and that sort of stuff. So if you're interested in supporting me and helping me to buy equipment or buy things from mailbag, please uh, check out the Patreon and PayPal links down below and uh, go and have a look. What is this? Oh, okay, right. I completely forgot about this. So this is an iPhone 6 screen. I have promised someone I'd repair their screen for them. I completely forgot about it. I feel like it's got a rigid protector in there too. Yeah, the yeah, rigid screen protector. So that's good. Whole screen assembly, you have to change the home button over and stuff like that and then mess around with those things. This looks like a little screws that screwed on. I've never done an iPhone 6, so it should be interesting. I'll do a video on it. So if you're interested in catching that later on, then remember to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I'll go over replacing an iPhone 6 screen, even though I've never done one before. Do this sort of thing is important. Do not apply pressure. You need to be careful about damaging the flex cables and all that. You know, it's all very sensitive stuff. These will fold over somehow like that. And so then you've got the camera and everything goes in there, which has to be mounted onto there, it looks like. So you have to transfer all, the, all these assemblies over onto here as well. I'll get that done for them. That was actually fairly quick. I only ordered it about a week ago now, I think. Something like that. Yeah, not bad at all. 
kind of the standard little kit. They're all, a lot of them come with ice. This helps get the job done a little bit easier, but I've got loads of ice things now. Should read this too, shouldn't I? Power down the phone. Yeah, okay. Do not apply pressure. Yes. Yes, don't force the connectors. Yes. Yeah, if you do it wrong, do it again. Right, okay. No, this is trying to be awful. So, yep, yeah, all good. Right, see what's in here. Now, interesting, it says package one of two. Now, the fact that it says brother one, it means I think I know what's in it anyway. And I was expecting two. So I wonder what happened to the second one. Only one arrived. That's a bit concerning. Hmm. Hopefully it turns out tomorrow. Uh, not too interesting, it's just a brother Tony cartridge. It's a 3465, which is for my what was it, HML 6200DW printer. Um, this can do 1200 pages. It's got a high yield count cartridge, it's the highest yield one I do. Also, quite expensive for about. 250 bucks each, they're about depending on where you go. Um, some are more expensive, some are 300, some are about I've said down as low as 200 at some point. I don't know where I saw that now, so I haven't been able to find that one again. So this one was 250, I'll pay for that, I think. And I ordered two of them because you know we need a lot of them for what we do, so not that exciting. I'm not going to hope that. I'm always trying to buy things, I'm always on the lookout for buying bits of test gear. I mean, I'm trying to focus on doing repairs, but it gets expensive buying all this repair stuff. I'm always on lookout for a large piece of test gear, things which are worth trying to repair, things which may interest me that I could either use myself or could resell later on, um, or to recoup the cost of buying it in the first place, that kind of thing. If you have any old test gear which doesn't work, uh, maybe get in touch. If you want to gift it to me, I'm happy to pay postage. If it's not too expensive, I may even be happy to, to buy it off you if it's something I'm also looking for. Leave a message down below if you've got anything like that which I might be interested in. It's always uh, hard trying to find something which I can use to do videos on. I'm always looking. I spend hours and hours a week on eBay trying to find suitable bits of equipment to uh, to purchase to do videos on. But, you know, things which have a good chance of me fixing them. There's never any guarantees. The cheaper stuff is usually in quite poor condition. It's usually beaten up, bits are broken off, or you know, damaged the front panels, that sort of stuff. You can usually tolerate a little bit, you know, dirtiness and that sort of stuff. But if you've got bits broken off or big dings in the panels. I, I tend to steer clear of those because it may be that it's you know, damaged controls on the fan panel. Thanks for watching. Kiss you later.